as you can see in your screen, you're seeing one of the major surrenders to the God blessing of Gaga that God has forced upon us through the blessing of GIJ, J, Equals Zero. You're seeing here surrender from Gottingen University, a university which is representative of the overall European society, but in particular, it's a German university which once had a distinction of having the greatest European mathematician prior to Gagut heading the mathematics department there. A professor by the name of Professor Carl Friedrich Gauss. This is the Gauss Year 2005 celebration, which took place 150 years after the transforming of Professor Gauss in the year 1855. Can you see the page in front of you? Yes, I see it. Page in front of you. Yes, I see it. Praise God. So what you're seeing here at the very top of the list is the work by Professor Ogibo, listed as Grand Unified Theorem. That was the number one work chosen to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. To understand that positioning and ranking, you must understand the concept of the company in which one keeps. To understand that, we have to look at some of the potential runners-up or people who could have been in that position, but ultimately were not. If you take a look at NR19 at the bottom of the page, or week 19, can you see week 19 where it says, Sir Michael Atia and Daniel Iago Nixer, field medalist? Field medalist lecture, can you see that? Yes, I see it. Praise God. Sir Michael Atia was at one time a successor to another famous European mathematician from Cambridge University, which he was from. But he's a successor to another famous European by the, a mathematician by the name of Sir Isaac Newton. He has also the distinction of not just being a successor to Newton, who is one of the top three European mathematicians, but also he has won an award which is equivalent to Nobel Prize, which is the Fields Medal. That's why you have the title Fields Medalist Lectures. You understand that part so far? Yes, I understand that. Praise God. So when you talk about the Fields Medal, the Fields Medal, Fields Medal is a award that's equivalent to Nobel Prize. It's a prize that's been awarded to Atia in, back in 1966, about 53 years ago. But also up until from 1936 up until the 2005 year, there had been 44 Nobel Prize Award equivalents or Field Medalists. So... Atiyah could have been the number one work because he comes from, he's a successor to Newton at Cambridge, and Gauss had a lot of respect for Newton, even though Gauss came after Newton and is considered to be the superior mathematician. Gauss had a lot of respect for Newton due to what he did. He also, I'm talking about Atiyah now, is a field medalist, fields medalist, which means he's won an award which is equivalent to Nobel Prize, and his work contains 44, including his own work, field medalist in it. Any one of those points could have made him the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. Gottingen ranked his work inferior to Gaga, placing it at week 19 as opposed to week 26, seven places below. What they're telling you, and they're telling you that each one of these works they selected at Gottingen University to honor Gauss should be studied for at least one year by everyone across the world, every school, everywhere. But in particular with this ranking positioning, when they've put a tier and 43 other field medalists or a Nobel Prize award equivalents at week 19, seven places below, they're telling you that Gagat is worth more than 44 Nobel Prizes. Can you see that? Yes, I see that. Praise God. So then the next one we have to look at is week or NR23. You'll see the second name there, Anatoly T. Fomenko. Can you see that name, Anatoly T. Fomenko? At NR23? Yes, I see. Yes. That, praise God. Who is he, you ask? Well, the name indicates that he's Russian, but more to that, and his page is loading up, just give it a second. Anatoly Timovich Fomenko, can you see his page in front of you? I see it. Praise God. Uh, is a Soviet and Russian mathematician, born in 1945, and is a member of the Academy, Russian Academy of Sciences. 
That's very important. He's also a professor at Moscow State University. So why is this important? Fomenko comes from the top level university system in Russia, like our Harvard and Yale here in America, or Harvard and MIT, and Oxford and Cambridge in the UK or the England. He's also a successor to, to another famous European mathematician, and that is Professor Leonard Euler, which his page is loading up. Just give it a second. Can you see his page in front of you? I see it now. It's gone. Why is this important? Professor Leonard Euler, born in 1707, transformed on in 1783, he was a German-Swiss mathematician, physicist, astronomer, logician, and engineer who made important and influential discoveries in many branches of mathematics, such as infinitesimal calculus and graph theory. But if you go to the second paragraph, it says, Euler was one of the most eminent mathematicians of the 18th century and is held to be one of the greatest in history. The last sentence is also important. He spent most of his academic adult life in St. Petersburg, Russia, the same Russia and area where Fomenko is right now. So what you have to understand here is Fomenko is a successor to Euler. Can you understand that? I understand. Praise God. So now that you understand that, he'll, sorry, Euler, like Gauss, was very well respected by, uh, sorry, Euler, like Newton, was very well respected by Gauss. As you know, Gauss came after both of them. So what's important to understand is that although Euler, sorry, Gauss is considered to be the superior mathematician, he had a lot of respect for Euler. And for Menko being a successor to Euler could have made him the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. Dr. Ginn ranked the work of a successor to Euler, for Menko, that is, inferior to Gaga. That's why he's placed at week 23 as opposed to week 26. Can you see that? Yes, I see it. Praise God. Now, if you look at NR or week 24, you'll see the name David Hilbert. Who is he, you ask? Let's take a look. Can you all see the page of Professor David Hilbert on your screen? I see it. Praise God. Professor David Hilbert, born in 1862, transformed on in 1943, was a German mathematician and one of the most influential and universal mathematicians of the 19th and early 20th centuries. Now, what's important is if you look at his picture on the right, if you scroll down below, you will see where it says here that he is associated with the University of Göttingen or Göttingen University. Can you see that in front of you on your screen? I see it. Yes. Hilbert is a successor to Gauss at Göttingen University. Both headed the mathematics department at Göttingen. However, Hilbert came in after Gauss and headed the mathematics department after Gauss. What's also important is, what I'm also going to bring to your attention now, if you look now below on the right, still in the right column on the page, you'll see a list of doctoral students or people who got their PhD under yeah, uh, Hilbert, and there are 69. You can see the names are hyperlinked or uh, in blue because they lead to their own separate website pages on Wikipedia. What's important to understand here is that he has 69 PhDs in mathematics under, his, uh, under him, which is a feat that's really unparalleled by most people. No one really has such a level of having students of uh, their PhDs in mathematics and all or most of them becoming stars in the field of mathematics like uh, Hilbert has. Then you have to see here, Hilbert is a successor to Gauss at Göttingen University. He is also known as the last of the great mathematicians and also is the distinction of overseeing 69 PhDs in mathematics with all of them becoming stars in the field. Any one of those points or in combination of uh, all three of those points could have made him the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss since he comes from Göttingen. Göttingen very painfully had to rank his work inferior to Gagut. That's why it's placed two places below where Gagut is at week 26. And you see that. 
Yes, I see it. Now the question is, why was Gaga selected as the number one work to honor Gauss in light of all of these things that I've just mentioned? Well, that comes now to the point that I want to bring to your attention, which is, why was Gaga selected as the number one work to honor Gauss? A black man, a work by a professor Ogibo, who was blessed by God as being an African with the totality of all intelligence, or Gagatian of all intelligence. It is because Gagat, the acronym, God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem, has recognized mathematics is the study of theorems. That is what Gagat has decoded the subject of mathematics to be. Do you follow so far? Yes, sir, I do. Praise God. The next thing that needs to be digested is, once you recognize that Gagat has recognized study of mathematics to be the study of theorems, then you have to also realize Gagat from the acronym itself, God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem. Gagat contains all theorems. That's why it's unified theorem. It contains all theorems. Can you see that as well? Yes, I do. Praise God. So if you take those two statements, Gagat is defining mathematics to be the study of theorems, and Gagat from its acronym's definition means it contains all theorems, hence a unified theorem. One can now infallibly conclude and deduce that Gagat contains all of mathematics. Can you see that? I see that. This is the blessing which forced the Germans, who did not want to see themselves second to anyone, as the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. Gagat contains all mathematics works, past, present, and future, infallibly. So all the works that have happened before Gagat, all the work that happened during the same time as Gagat in terms of the present or relative present, and then any future mathematical work are all originating out of G I J comma J equals zero. This is what forced the Germans to put a God, a black man directly from Gagatia as the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. In doing so, they have taken that baton from Gauss who held the position before Gagat as being the greatest mathematician they have now handed it over to Professor Yibo and officially declared Professor Yibo as being the greatest mathematician of all time that can never be surpassed. We say to this, praise God. Praise God. Amen to that, Ms. Rome. So this is the point that needs to be digested. Without God, that black people have never made this list. The whole design by Jim Crow was automatically designed to keeping black people out of the subject. But God blessed us with not only getting into the list through Professor Ebo, but being the very top of the list. That is the blessing of God and how God has blessed us with a victory over Jim Crow. Can you see that? Praise God, yes. Praise God. So that's one very powerful victory, and it would have been powerful on its own, but it was complemented by another, which comes to the east of Europe, which is in Asia, more specifically India. I bring to your attention now a, a page on a research paper conducted from uh, professors in mathematical physics from a university in India called Jamia Milia Islamia, a top 19 university in India. Can you see the page in front of you? Yes. Can you see the page in front of you? Yes. Okay. Gauge conditions for an abelian turn Simon system consistent with equations of motion. You see four names there. The third name is the name I'd like you to focus on. Can you see the name Krishnendu Dasgupta? Yes, I see it. Praise God. They are from the Department of Physics at Jamia Milia Islamia. Can you see that as well? Yes, I do. Okay. And it's July 16th, 2006, the date of this abstract. But what's important to understand is Dasgupta, professor, mathematical physics professor Dasgupta, 
is an expert in the field of mathematical physics. He comes from a top 19 school in India called Jamia Millia Islami, which is funded in part by the King of Saudi Arabia. And he himself had heard the news about Gagat and was compelled to write our university a letter in light of that revelation. However, in light of this blessing of Gagat, you have to realize that Dasgupta comes from a background that's not particularly friendly towards black people, before Gagat, that is. He comes from a caste system in India where he, the people are uh, classified by skin color, where the so-called light-skinned people are so-called the highest. And as you get into darker shades of skin color, they're in the lower levels till you reach the black people in India, they're very viciously called in India Dalit or untouchables. That's the system Dasgupta comes from. So when God blessed a black man, a Gagatian, with the solution to all problems, he said the following, and I'll bring to you the message that he sent to us back in 2007, 12 years ago. Can you see the message in front of you? I do see it. Praise God. You're seeing a message from Krishnu Das Gupta dated July 25th, 2007 to Professor Yibo. The subject title is God's mission and Das Gupta. In effect, Das Gupta here is testifying to about what he's going to articulate in this message. And the message reads as follows. Dear Oyibo, good day. I heard that you have been successful in finding the unified field theory. Congratulations. You are more close to God than any of us. You are more close to God than any of us. I was also working upon this theory. Since my theory was different, God was different to me. Please write to me, as I'd like to know where I was wrong. Thanking you, yours, Krishnendu Dasgupta. This is the destruction of the caste system forever, which is important to understand and recognize as a victory, because the fraud of the caste system put black people at the bottom. Now, in light of Gagat, a black man has been recognized as being more close to God than any of us. You can't get any higher than that as a human being or any creature that in God's creation. So when Dasgupta recognizing God that has placed Professor Ibo as being more close to God than any of us, we as black people share the same genes as Professor Gio Ibo. That means the black race is more close to God than any other race. And that is a destruction of the caste system. Can you see that, Ms. Ra? Praise God. Yes, I see that. So we have to say, Praise God. Praise God forever and ever. Amen to that. So the next thing that needs to be digested here also is the following. Dasgupta also comes from a very heavily Isla uh, Islamic area in India. And when he declared a black man as being more close to God, that could have, if he was articulating something that was false or fraudulent, it could have put his life in danger. A countryman of his by the name of Sahaman Rushdie back in the late 80s or 1988 and 1989. He, in 1988, he wrote a work called The Septanic Verses, which was a fictional account on Muhammad. It was considered to be such an affront to Islam and so abject amongst their people, uh, the followers of Islam. The Ayatollah of Iran in 1989 ordered the followers of Islam to assassinate Rushdie for that work. He had to rescue and take him out of India to make sure he wasn't killed. When Dasgupta articulated this in 2007, he was in a very heavily Islamic area in India. He could
However, assassination attempt on uh, Escupta, and is alive even well, this became the cause. May 26, 2000, the said later in 19, there has been fallible truth. Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you. It's static, though. It's important to yeah, recognize that Escupta has... I'm sorry? Hear me? What, what do you mean? Yeah, I can hear you now. I don't understand what you meant, but it's breaking up sometimes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. So a little static, but keep, keep going. 